Hello, how are you? When you look at the sky, how many heavens do you perceive, and what do these heavens contain? You would probably say that you see only one heaven, but during the day, you observe clouds, the sun, and the blue interrupted by the horizon. At night, you see the darkness of space illuminated by thousands of stars, as well as the moon, which often plays a role in romantic stories. However, when you look within yourself, especially if you are a person of faith, how many heavens can you perceive? Surely, another type of heaven comes to mind, the one that all Christians aspire to go to after completing their journey on earth. This heaven is popularly known as paradise and is not contemplated in the same way as the first heaven that we see daily. The Bible, on the other hand, makes reference to and explains these different heavens. According to the Bible, there are three types of heavens. The first is the physical heaven, the one we see every day. It is where we find the clouds, where birds fly, and where God separated the waters from the land, as stated in Genesis 1 verses 6 to 8. This is the space of the atmosphere, composed of different layers, from which we extract essential gases for life, such as oxygen, for both humans and plants. It is in this first heaven that birds can fly freely. The atmosphere has two important divisions, day and night, which God separated to mark time, seasons, and years. Additionally, God created luminaries like the sun to illuminate the earth, providing light during the day and facilitating human activities. The moon and stars, among other celestial bodies, were created to prevent nights from being completely dark, making them more pleasant and providing moments of well-deserved rest. However, these luminaries are located in the second heaven, not the first. The second heaven is the nighttime sky that we gaze at, scientifically referred to as outer space or the cosmos. It's the abode of celestial luminaries like stars, planets, and galaxies. Genesis 1 verses 14 to 19 recounts the creation of these celestial bodies, and God said, let there be lights in the vault of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them serve as signs to mark sacred times, and days and years, and let them be lights in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars. God set them in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate light from darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. The Bible describes how God created these celestial objects to illuminate the earth, mark seasons, days, and years, and to have dominion over day and night. Science also confirms that celestial bodies influence climate, tides, and seasons. However, certain passages in the Bible suggest that God created these stars to manifest His glory and power, such as Genesis 1 verses 14 to 19 and Matthew 2 verses 1 to 2, where the Magi followed a star to find the birthplace of Jesus. The Bible also implies that God created other celestial bodies to challenge human curiosity and intelligence. According to Genesis 1 verses 26 to 28, humans were given dominion over all of creation and the ability to explore and comprehend the universe, thereby glorifying the Creator. Science is a means of understanding God's work and marveling at His wisdom. Furthermore, the Bible states that God loved the world and sent His Son for the redemption of humanity, as seen in John 3 verse 16. However, the term world here may refer not only to humanity but to all of creation. Perhaps God has a plan of redemption not just for Earth but for the entire universe. The Bible also suggests that all of creation eagerly awaits the revelation of the children of God, as described in Romans 8 verses 19 to 22. This raises the possibility of intelligent life on other planets that also needs God's grace. The third heaven is a biblical term used by the Apostle Paul to describe the place where he had an extraordinary vision of God and paradise. 
According to biblical interpretation, the third heaven is the spiritual realm where God resides and where the redeemed will spend eternity. This heaven is distinct from the first heaven, which is the earth's atmosphere, and the second heaven, which is the celestial space. The third heaven is considered the highest and most sublime of all, beyond which no one can ascend. Christian tradition believes that the third heaven is a spiritual reality, invisible to natural eyes and only accessible through faith. The church anticipates the return of Christ, who will take the faithful to the third heaven, where they will enjoy the glory of God, peace, and joy. The church also professes that the third heaven will manifest on earth when God creates a new heaven and a new earth, where there will be no sin, suffering, or death. This vision is recorded at the beginning of chapter 21 in the book of Revelation, John's Apocalypse. However, science has no means of proving the existence of the third heaven since it is not an object of scientific study. Science deals with natural and observable phenomena that can be measured and tested. The third heaven is a matter of faith and spiritual revelation that does not lend itself to the scientific method. Science acknowledges that there are many things still unknown or unexplained by human reason and recognizes the limits of human knowledge. Therefore, accepting the existence of three heavens depends on individual faith, just as the question of whether someone goes to the third heaven or not depends on their actions under the first heaven. Perhaps that's why this subject is rarely discussed. What do you think? Please feel free to share your opinion. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time. Goodbye.